How did you came in contact with Jim Reeves? Did you know him before you started recording? Uh, no, I first uh, I knew Jim in the studio uh, the very first time I was called to do call by the secretaries to come and record with Jim Reeves. And I didn't know who Jim Reeves was at that time, but uh, he, he had already had a record uh, uh, on another label in Shreveport, I think, uh, that had made some noise and had been in the charts. And, uh, but I didn't know that at the time. I found out after I got to the studio and started and got to know Jim that, uh, uh, that he had already recorded in another town. And, uh, but, we, but then he moved in my neighborhood where my house was. Uh, he lived about four, five blocks from me. And uh, so we became neighborhood friends and recording friends. And uh, then I would see him at different places. Uh, I, I might be working with someone else and he would be on the same show. And, and we would always uh, greet each other. We were, we were not close friends, but we were good friends. Okay, let's yeah. go. So, uh, Bob, we, uh, as, a, as a bass player, you played along with uh, Jim Reeves. How was it to work with him as a, as a person? Oh, he was great. He was uh, straight up uh, about everything. He tried to do everything to perfection. Uh, he had a great ear, and he sang very true. And uh, all the musicians were impressed and, and happy to work with him. Uh, he, uh, as you know, he at one time was a baseball player. Yeah. And uh, so he, he wanted everything to be uh, as perfect as it would on the ball field. You know, if he was feeling the ball, he wanted to do it perfectly and make sure that he got the out. And, uh, and so he carried that on into his musical career. He, uh, he was a kind, very kind, very nice person. Always serious, but uh, when he laughed, uh, he had a big laugh. And uh, he was more interested in, in uh, taking care of his business and his friends than most of them. He was very sober. And always a gentleman. That's like yeah, we talked about it before. And uh, uh, I happen to notice when I listen to the, the older recordings when he was on Abbott uh, label, the Abbott label, mm -hmm. uh, he sang a little bit higher than on later on when he joined uh, RCA with uh, Chet Atkins. Uh, was it Chet Atkins that? that got uh, Jim Reeves to sing lower than before? No, I really don't believe that. I, I really think that we all, all men, we're yeah. all people. Uh, our voices get deeper as we get older. And we have a little more quality. And, uh, and uh, uh, well, take Elvis, for instance. Listen to his records, his first records. He sings much higher than he did toward the end, mm -hmm. and uh, and I believe that to be true with almost all people. So, but basically, you think it's because he was aging, he was aging that he uh, lowered the voice a little. Well, I don't think he lowered the voice. I think it's a natural okay. thing, and uh, and I don't think that Chet would have had anything to do with that. The Chet mainly were, was in on the picking of the songs that they were going to do, and Chet was very good at that. And uh, uh, mostly in the studio, the musicians would, as a gang, 
make the uh, the arrangements on on each record one at a time. And, and everybody offering suggestions, and some rejected and some taken. And um, we worked as a group, as we did with everybody else. We worked with uh, uh, hundreds during our career, and we always try to keep it as, as a group effort. So everybody got involved in how the sound should be? And right how it should, should end and stuff like that. That's right, and, and if we made a, uh, what we call a playback so that we could listen to it, then we would correct, uh, uh, like if the engineer didn't have quite enough guitar, well the guitar player would say, well let's do one more and try bringing the guitar up just a little. And the engineers were considered a part of our group. They were members of our band. Yeah. They're just as important as everybody. Oh yeah, they are. They're they're more sound. so. They, they, can they can turn you off if they want to. <laughs> I read something about that um, Jim Reeves uh, had a, a strange habit of when he recorded something that he would listen to it, put it in a kind of a closet, and then take it out three months later and listen to it again. If it still liked it, then it was put on record. Is that true? Well, I, I didn't follow him around, but a lot of them do that. A lot of them, uh, because it gives them a chance to listen several times uh, at different times. You know, you sometimes you on uh, one o'clock in the morning you wake up and you say, I, you know, I need to listen to. It to that and he'll go and critique himself and and uh, I would imagine that Jim would do that, yes. I, 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 I don't know that, but I would imagine, yes. It's a good way to, to, to exit to music and listen to it again and again and put it away for a couple of weeks or months and listen. To, if you still like it yourself, it could be possible a good record. Yeah, afterwards. well you know, now, uh, Today, in uh, 2005, the, uh, we have uh, electronic equipment that we didn't have back in June. Like the Pro Tools. Right, example, yeah. right, like Pro Tools, and you can replace one instrument at a time and anywhere in the song. Uh, if there's just one missed note, you can replace that one note. Well, in those days, uh, you would have to do the entire record over again with all the musicians again. Extensive hobby. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, there's something that still keeps. Uh, I don't know what, where it is. Yesterday we went to Jim Reeves' old house downtown Nashville. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't it? get to you when you see uh, in which state it is right now that, that some people forget about how important he was to country music. Uh, the wild dogs running around, you know, you don't feel safe and it should be nicely repaired and be a museum or something. Well, <clears throat> that house they, uh, they turned, uh, turned over and bought a, a, a bigger and nicer house. Uh, before uh, Jim uh, passed on. Yeah. And so I think that they kept um, the newer house uh, in, in a uh, better in better shape. After they had turned the first house they had, they more or less walked away. But as I, I recall, it, the old house was a museum. Yeah. And that's over now. There's no, there's no Jim Reeves museum. I was searching for one in town, but... Right, yeah, well they did have a museum there. Uh, I, I'm not uh, able to comment on, on what went on there, uh, because that was... Uh, after Jim was gone, I, I didn't stay acquainted. Of the session musicians. So, right. Sadly enough, the next one will come and hire your expertise. And, yeah, and right. And you play the bass for... Roy Robinson or yeah. whoever came along, as long as somebody pays the checks. Yeah. Make, make them a living, feed, yeah. feed the family. How did 
the, the gym uh, actually uh, worked in the studio? Was he like a tyrant or dictator or did he involve everybody into it? Uh, no, he was not uh, a tyrant or a dictator, but a figure of speech. But uh, he was, as I said before, he was very business, and um, uh, he felt that uh, as uh, as being a ball player, uh, they don't have time for uh, the right fielder to go smoke a cigarette. Yeah. And, uh, and he feels that, that everybody is there to win the game. And uh, he would do so in the studio. And if somebody was sloughing off, as I would call it, and not paying attention, he would call it to their attention. He'd say, we need to, we need to get, pay attention here. But that's not a dictator. No, no, but... I just tried to to find out um, that there are some artists that are real pain in the butt, as we would call it, uh, working with. No, uh, I really okay. enjoy it. I looked forward. When I would get called and, and, and uh, they would make an appointment with me, and I would accept a session with him and put it in my book sometimes a month ahead and uh, I would I'd look forward to working with him. Do you remember the day when you heard he died? Yeah, uh, actually I do remember the day I was uh, uh, to be on a plane at about five o'clock or six o'clock and uh, I was head heading to Europe and I was going to Germany and I got on the plane and we took off and as we took off I was looking out the window and I could see searchlights all down in the area where his plane had, had crashed and uh, I had to uh, and I was and I flew to London and I was in London about four days before going on to Germany. And I didn't know for four days that Jim was was in the plane for sure and that he had been killed. I didn't know that for three or four days until it came out in the London newspaper. And yes, I do remember that day. When Jim died, did uh, his wife carry on his work yeah, uh, she uh, carried, carried his work on very nicely, I thought, uh, and uh, some place down the road uh, I lost track of him. I was busy making my own way through life, and, uh, and, uh, and I knew Mary, and I liked Mary, but uh, I was not close with Mary. And I would see her on occasion at a at a party or sometimes at, a, at an award cer ceremony or someplace. And we would talk a few minutes, but uh, other than that, I did not know their business, no. If you should look through all the things that Jim Reeves have done, all his songs, are there some songs that you could pick out and say, those songs had a special quality. Well, yeah, like? sure. Uh, uh, put your sweet lips a little closer to the phone, you know. That's, that's great. Uh, uh, He'll Have to Go is the name of that. And, uh, uh, and he had uh, several other album cuts that I liked. Uh, one especially, he did a song with my little seven-year-old boy. And the name of that song is, But You Love Me, Daddy. And my son sang with Jim on that record, and I'm uh, really proud of that. So is my son. 
if you made a new song or came up with a new song, did he come and say, hey, what do you think of this song? Or after the recording, what do you think of this song? Could it be better? Or uh, he would usually have his song ready when he came to the studio. Uh, he always said, if you're going to play ball, you got to go to the ballpark. And so he had his songs ready. And uh, after the songs were cut, then sometimes he would say, how you like this one? How you like this one? Which one's the best? But uh, he had his own opinion. What do you think made Jim Reeves such a big star? Uh, it was his voice and his singing style. Very smooth, very true, very recognizable. If you heard Jim Reeves, no, no one had to say, that's Jim Reeves singing. You knew it the minute you heard him. Just like Elvis, same thing. You hear Elvis and you know it's Elvis. You hear Jim Reeves, you know it's Jim Reeves. You hear Patsy Klein, you know it's Patsy Klein. 